All right, we here. <laughs> So now I got to mute one of these. So now I got to mute one of these. All right. <laughs> I said it in a video. I said, I'm hoping that I don't have any form of technical right. difficulty. <laughs> I and I did. So let me know if I have any echo going on or anything like that. Am I good now? Okay. So <laughs> let's get this show on the road, right? All right. All right. So we are going to be talking about Mama Day and uh, how it all <laughs> went for you guys. Um, so I read this early in the month and then I had to go back to like maybe 150 pages just to like go over certain things that happened that I thought was difficult for me because you guys know I don't read this genre that often. Like Mama Day is not my kind of book that I read on the regular. So when I read something like this, I tend to have to go over it, take some notes and try to to get the gist of um the, the metaphors and certain things and also certain things that I might have missed, you know, so I can like get what really what the story is about. So let me know if you guys had to do that or this is like a genre that you guys read on a regular so it didn't bother you at all. Yeah. Um Okay. Yeah, you 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 definitely um over time ha um was able to catch up on it. Um I do find that towards the end where the there's that um spirit woman and um I had to like try to understand how far back this is going. Um, so for me, that was a struggle because it had that um, magical realism in it. And oftentimes those storylines like that, I have to like pay attention because I'm like, huh? <laughs> you know? Hi, Alicia. Alicia. You had to call a high school <laughs> to get some help. <laughs> All right, Sharon. Yeah, yeah, I can see how you had to. Oh, and you also had to keep um, notes. Yeah, um, I definitely saw that coming. Now, what I would say is um, the note taking has definitely helped me with this. I do find that I had to take notes. Um, it wasn't just like I grabbed the, the gist of everything at first um so we can just like dig in and start talking about like how how do you feel about mama day like did you love it not so much how did you feel about it hi onyx um
Oh, you, <laughs> you delayed reading the book. That is, uh, You delay reading the book long, long ago. Okay. Yeah, I've never read any book by this author. This author is known to me very much, but I've never um, read anything by this author until now. I've um, watched um, Women's of uh, Bruce's Place several times, but not read the actual book. Hi, Onyx. <laughs> I think you should read this, Honest. This is definitely up your alley. This is definitely up your alley. Um, you know, the, um, yeah, Honest Place, you, could, you should read this. I do, I do feel like this is um, your cup of tea. Really? All her books have magical... I don't think The Woman of Bruce's Place. Is the book more like that? Because the the movie didn't feel like it was, um, the movie didn't feel like it was a magical rhythm. It felt like real life situation, um, for me. Really? Uh, okay. It's, it's, I find that a lot of people, um, do say that is, um, which is why I picked this up because, um, Alicia, Alicia, because a lot of people said that this was one of their favorite books. Um, a lot of people from her. And I guess I see why. Now I find that there were moments in this book that I could laugh about. There were some quotable moments in this book. And there's some moments then towards the end that I got a little bit of teary eye. Like I, I was just like, oh God, <laughs> like it just felt so sad to me. But at the same time, um, you know, there were some moments where I'm like, what in the world? See, now I'm going to have to uh, watch. Maybe I should just read The Woman of Bruce's Place um, since I don't remember it like that. But just to see, it does it have that? And I think, so, I think in her book, she has hidden message because there is a section um, towards the end where, where she says... Um, uh, at the and this is towards the end three, on three eleven and she said, um, um, you see, that's what I mean. There are just too many sides to this whole story. So I think she did that in terms of there's probably going to be a lot of different opinion about the whole saga at the end. Um, and is love or did it? <laughs> For instance, um, how did you guys feel about the fact that she, like Mama Day, has sent that letter? And in that letter, it had powdery lavender situation. Do you think she opened the door for a situation to happen? Um, yeah, I think Sharon also, I don't think, <laughs> um, that I would appreciate this book if I read this 30 years ago. Well, yeah, 
uh, even 10 years ago um, because of the genre that, you know, like I said, I don't read a lot of this. I think I appreciate it more now because of how the to story is told. Um, it was interesting in that way. Uh, okay. It's real magic in a way. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't, I wonder if when I, when I was reading this, did you feel like she intentionally know that something may come of her actions because it welcomed a man in a, a situation that um, I guess it was his and he was meant to be there, but in a way, did she draw him in <laughs> it, it, and lure him to his death <laughs> or it was destiny? How do you feel about that situation, guys? Yeah, it's out. It's definitely, I love when George got to the community and he just felt like this was paradise. <laughs> this, <laughs> like he didn't know his faith. He just thought this was like a beautiful, what is Coco talking about? This is just like a wonderful situation. And I thought that was interesting how the story is told because it's like, yeah, but little, you know, <laughs> little did he know that things was going to change. Okay. He lacked family and was drawn to her family. I don't think he was destined for what happened, but life is unpredictable. That's true. Um, I definitely see that because he was once he realized the connection he has with her, he was like she was his all. And that I've got exactly what he said to Mama Day at the at when they talked, um, and how he felt about her. And I thought, yeah, and it I think it goes back to Bailey Cafe because I have not read that. But you know that part in the book where he was mad, <laughs> where he didn't want to be called. Um, what, was, what did she call him? And he got mad. Ah, uh, son of son of a bitch. <laughs> Yo, I was just like, whoa! I was not ready for that particular part. The slap took me out. <laughs> so I was like, whoa, you know. But it's like you get a lot of message in that where. Um, where she mentioned about um, how men see women, how they see how they see their mom is how they see women, and I thought that was an, a really hitter in that in that part of the, the story, um, and and I think also when he was around all these women and how they were and they embrace him, um, you saw him be a different person and, and, and was willing to do things um, that he probably wouldn't have done before because like you said, you know, mentioned before, uh, he had no family. Um, this was his family. Now, you know. Oh yeah, I think you said. I think um, Mama, 
Mamadi allowed him to make the choice. She mentioned the hard way on my way. Yeah. Yeah. That that part was like I it's just it was so weird. And I was just like, oh my goodness. Like I mean, I think once because he loved Coco so much, once he saw that the pain and the condition she was in, and I, I think I, I already knew he was gonna make a decision of following that um what she says, even though it just to me, I would think it was weird and <laughs> and out off the top what she asked him to do. Um, but he loved her. He loved Coco. There, there was so much love in this. And, you know, it, it also like really got me good at the end. And that's a part that made me want to cry when um, and on page 302, when he said, as my bleeding hand slid gently down her arm, there was total peace. Oh my God. I read that part and I was like, oh yeah, not going to cry. <laughs> not gonna cry is that love i don't know about that kind of love but that is some serious love um that it's it's it was that part was hard that part was so hard to read and you you you, you in real life you would hope coco get that message because just imagine the torment she's going through for years of what sacrifice he made um, but that part of the book, I was just like, whoa, yeah. The, the tears, yeah. Yeah, so much love. It's a lot of love in this book. It's a lot of love. Even with the the... The doctor, what's his name? Bush something. <laughs> you know, even his, him, it, you, you can see that the town was full of love, of uh, friendship. And, 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 and even when they knew that man was like the worst, you know, player ever. And they knew he was conning and cheating and they still wanted to play with him. They still wanted um, to have fun with him, even if they're going to lose a little bit of money. You can see how this town was just magical and these people knew how to come together and protect each other. Yeah, that's exactly what Coco felt. She didn't believe in that kind of love, so she tried to sabotage it early on. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with that one. I think maybe it's just me. Let me know if you guys thought of that. The fact that she didn't have a male figure, per se, um, in her life. And she's always been surrounded by older women, um, whether it's her aunt, her grandmother, or women of the town. So that might have contributed to her not feeling that kind of love because she never saw it. So, you know, when you think of even real life, you know, you, 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 you're not going to be easily persuaded if you've never seen it. Yeah, George was. Yeah, I would say. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, he was very much um, the most practical person in this. I do find their arguments <laughs> quite entertaining. Um, you know, when she's she just picking fights with him, especially that when she's wearing a foundation shade too dark. <laughs> he called her. I don't know what the heck the name he called him, but I was freaking hollering because I'm like, oh, he's 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 just as bad as entertaining her madness at when she's you know when she gets into her moment. But but yeah, I, I think he was necessary in the story. Um 
and 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 even towards and you when she moves on and have a, a experience you know life goes on situation he still had an imprint on her and allow her to still fall for someone else in, in essence so definitely a practical person in this whole situation I love how, oh yeah, yeah, that yeah, it was very organic. Yes, that whole um, because I'm a New Yorker, so I thought yes, I like how organic it was that they were just able to stroll down the street and he was showing her things, and and giving her a part of New York um, that most people don't think of. You know, there are so much. You know, they see so much of Manhattan and these tall buildings and don't realize they are neighborhood, they are family community setting in New York. Not everything is high rise and over the top tight. It depends on where you go. You go to Queens, you get a different sense of community. You go to Brooklyn, it's different. Manhattan, um, there are different parts of Manhattan even that has some kind of brownstone community setting versus what she you know, she saw. And I love that part of the story that it just was like, and it was romantic, you know, because they were just walking and they're talking and there was no, like, he wasn't being pushy and which, which made her confused. But I like that part of the story. There are, the love in this book comes in different ways. And that's a part that I really like, really um, enjoyed in this. Um, how you guys felt about the sisters? Mama Day, you know, <laughs> how you felt about um, Ophelia and Os Miranda? Yeah, I keep I keep messing because I, I want to just call her Mama Day. <laughs> not her real name. Just like, not, what am I saying? Abigail. Woo, where was that came from? Abigail. Uh, I feel it's Coco. Um, how do you feel about the sisters, like their relationship, being that they were around 89 and 90? Um, you know, how do you feel how they, the, how they, the importance they had in the story? Yeah, yeah, get on each other and have different personality. Yes, I, I do like that. I do like that the that it wasn't just because I just thought it was just going to focus on mom and dad. I didn't realize it was such a family situation that was going to be happening in the book. But I do like that part that they were, um, they had that family um, setting going on. Yeah, that that's that's true. Those sisters, they were so protective, rooted that they were to protect it. Yeah, they had to. Um, the history, the history from in the town. You know, there was always someone who tried to come in and take over the town and wanted to build this, build that, and, you know, so they were protectors of the town um, also, and um, I just thought it was interesting that you can't find a town anywhere, <laughs> like, how did she decide to make a town that's just sort of exists but don't exist, that kind of deal, I thought that was creative. Um, 
how long was uh glory um Nayla on your you know what it is oh place that sorry I'm trying to multitask in here um um how long was she on my radar um um be honest with you she was on my there's some authors that I have on my list for a while now like I, I have a little list of authors that I'm like I do need to read at some point um and she was one of those authors that was on there and but I wasn't didn't even think I was gonna pick it up until I don't remember who but someone in a comment um when I was talking about doing a read along I think I did my anniversary and they suggested um to read her and I wasn't sure if I was gonna read this one I think she I think she re recommended another book by um by Gloria um Naylor. but I thought this one was the book to pick because of so many people who said this book was um one of their favorites and once you give me that I'm gonna go with the favorite because I want to be I want to be blown away out the bat. <laughs> I don't want to pick a book that I'm not going to like. Because I find that when you when you pick a book for the first time, reading an author that is like a fan favorite and the first book you read, if you don't like it, it's hard for me to pick up another book by the author. Um, so I tend to like to go to like, okay, this got really good reviews. People tend to like it. So I'm going to pick this up first because I'm able to, to now... Ooh, let me go to read Bailey, um, Bailey's Cafe and all the other ones that people talk about. Um, and, you know, because this book impressed me. So, yeah, that's what we get with that one. Is this um, is for everybody? Well, we don't have that many people left in the room now. Is this like your first book from the author or have you read other books from the author? You didn't like um, Bailey's Cafe? Oh, see? A good thing I didn't pick it up first. <laughs> okay, to be fair, I didn't read uh, The Women of Booster's Place. Um, okay, but you didn't care for Bailey's Cafe. I'm still going to read it just because it will give me a little bit of George's story. And I feel like because I loved him in this book, I want to get a background of his family and his his background story. So I'll definitely read Bailey's Cafe at some point um, next year. Anybody else? Is this like your first book by the author? Um. How you guys felt about when, you know, when Bernice was trying to have a child and she finally had a child and the outcome was not great? How you feel about that? I thought that was so sad, but it's questionable how she got the child. So, yeah, I, I, I thought that was uh, interesting. Let me know. What do you guys feel about that Bernice, the friend? You read it 30 years ago, so yeah, probably you probably appreciate it now. <laughs> like you said, I think somebody else said, that, yeah, they read, um, you know. So 30 years ago, you were younger. You probably wouldn't have appreciated that much. That's kind of like me and all the classics I'm reading now. You have put these books in my hands, 30, you know, 20 years ago even. I, I, no. <laughs> it would not be... <laughs> A good thing for me, but maybe reread it and see if, if you feel the same way. The Women of Bruce's Place. What was the sequel for The Women of um, Bruce's Place? I don't know the sequel. There's a, there's a sequel? Lex. Oh, didn't know that. So now I'm curious because, like, how do that even play out? The way the woman of Booster plays in, it you know, it kind of summed up a lot. 
the man of Booster's Play. Really? Oh, that got to be interesting. Now, now I'm like, now, okay. So I'm going to make it a double read when I do read, read, finally read it. Just because I've, you know. It's the other side of the woman's Booster's Play, but then she did write men of Booster's Play. Hmm. But the, the men were, oh child, the, the men, <laughs> the men in Rooster's Place, they were no George. <laughs> child, you can love George in this. I don't know. Those women went through hell in that, in, in uh, Rooster's Place. There was a lot of really negative things that happened in that book. Linden Place. Hmm. Linden Place. I'm gonna. I'm definitely like I said because this this was a good one. I'm gonna add these and and read these other ones that you guys that people have liked. But I she's definitely an author that I would continue reading. You know, because I, I just finished Octavia Butler, guys. Tears. I have no more novel to read from Octavia Butler. It is, I have completely read all her books. I think I have maybe short story novella somewhere that I don't know of that I got to dig for. But so this, she might be another author that I just start picking up her books and read them. Say what? Mental issue. Um, oftentimes I find that artists, whether you are creative books and uh, physical art, painting, all that, um, do get within themselves at times, um, because they're in a creative space and that creative space can sometimes be heavy. So it'll be interesting. I'll look it up and see if she did. Um, but some of this stuff is dark. Some of this stuff, in, especially in this book, is, is if you think of it, it has some dark elements to it. So, yeah, that's that's a tough one. Hmm. I'm going to take your word for the sequel because... I've never heard of it, but I'm going to take your word that she's going to focus on the good guys because I, I love the good guy story, especially these books that were written in like in the 80s and 90s. You know, not often they have positive male characters in the book. So I'm going to take your word for it because that was pretty this this was a, a positive male characters, I think, in this book. And I, I can appreciate authors that did that because. It's easy to write negative about a, a male character than it is a complicated, positive character. Was she was standing? She died in Virgin. I don't know. I don't know if she was. I never really looked her up. Um... But it'd be interesting if she was. Who knows? Um, because if she was in the New York area, she was born in New York, there's a high possibility she has Caribbean roots. Um, because there's a lot of, especially in June this time, that you're talking the 80s, the 90s, there were a lot of writers, if you ever look on their background, as far as like their grandparents, they were Caribbean. Uh, Bailey Cafe. I just, um, I can imagine because that comment he made and the reaction he had when he talked about where he's from and, you know, the Bailey Cafe. Yeah, I can imagine it can't be, it, it, the men in there has to be dark because the, the man slapped the woman. <laughs> like, slapped the woman out of rage.
Ooh, we have a Virgin Island girl up in here. Renisha, that's her name. Do you know if she was from the Virgin Island? Oh, they said she has Southern Mississippi roots. Um, what other authors are you hesitant to read? Um, I don't know. None. I don't think I have any. It's it's the, it's not so much the author, it's the genre. Um, when it's heavy on, um, magical realism, um, sci-fi, I have to tread lightly <laughs> with those kind of books. Um. And that's that's my issue is because of the fact that sometimes it goes over my head, um, a lot of times. Um, Octavia Butler is probably the only author in that area that I haven't struggled with at all. Like, um, but there are other authors that you know just they, they can confuse the heck out of me, <laughs> and I have to constantly like you know reread a page or try to take notes so I can connect the dots when it's needed because, you know, something may have happened in the beginning of the book and it connects to something at the end of the book and it might go over my head, that kind of deal. So those kind of book, you know, literary fiction and romance and historical fiction, I don't struggle as much with those. I'm reading a chunky Dickens and I'm not struggling like that with, 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 with it. Much as when you put magical and sci-fi yeah, you, you get me sometimes. Um, anything else in this book that you guys thought was, let me see, because I did take a few notes. Um, what are some of your favorite quotes in here? Like, <laughs> Mama Day, when she talked about certain gems that Mama Day was dropping, I was like, okay, <laughs> I love what she said, short on money, long on pride. That was a good one. Mama Day is what we know as root woman, root workers. Yeah. Yeah. But it. I, it's when it, whenever we say root worker, sometimes it comes off very negative, like you know witchcraft or something like that. But I just like that she was into herbs. She was into herbs, and she was into certain things that were a remedy. You know, when you think of when Bab or um, Bernice decided she want to try some <laughs> some drug that she shouldn't have a child, and she was there and she knew certain things. And um, she still had to get a doctor, but she knew what the issue was um, and the remedy that would work that wasn't medicated. I think women like those, you sometimes miss them because they were using natural remedy. They were using plants and seeds and things that were working that was natural, um, but it comes with a negative thing because we're so used to going to get a pre prescription from the drugs that we think that's the that's the only way to go when those root women had a remedy that worked that was not um, had a lot a lasting negative effect.
Yeah, the lineage is definitely, you see that in this book because, you know, Mama Day is up in age. You know, she can't live forever, although, you know, they make it seem like she could. <laughs> so, um, so Coco has to somewhat, but then there's that, that haunting of the past, that spirit that still lingers and uh, can't really do that if they trying to hold on to, to her. And I think that's one of the things that happened where they, she had to be broke free in order to continue on and uh, protect the town, I guess. Oh, yeah, that quote was nice. Mm. Holistic remedy, yeah. That I like that term better than the, the root situation. Especially I'm Jamaican. When they say root, sometimes it comes with such a negative, um, you know, comments and people feel about that. So holistic remedies is much better term. Yeah. The old school island life, yeah. Which, again, we might not... No, I, I mean, if we look it up, she might have been have some family members. She might have come from the not born in the island per se, but you know, like we know she's not born in the island, but she might have grandparents or family that are from the island, and that might have in, you know influenced her story. <laughs> she's nice, ninety with no wrinkles, right? Like where? <laughs> what was her remedy? What's she eating? <laughs> well, I mean, it's a lot of organic because she was eating from the farm. But, you know, like, how are you 90 with no wrinkles? Hmm. Let's see what it says. Oh, description of known people by what they eat. So interesting. Mm, yeah, you, we don't think of stuff like that. I, I never think of stuff like that. But then you also, it's it's really, it, yeah, yeah, you can, I think it's more of how you care, you feel about your body. And I think sometimes when you think of what people feed their body and how they treat themselves, it says a lot about their character and their personality. Let's see what I see. The the well, the first woman um, of the town. The story about that she had seven kids. <laughs> I that part of the story because it, it was brought up so many times. I had to revisit that in the story to see. The connection and there's a, that saying as like a man died from a broken heart but then it's also like she was never released which is why she lingered around how you feel about that part of the story Ooh, that's a good one Mm. That's a good one. Mad World, 1962. It's a good one. I, I I think in the story to family and community was heavy in this book. And you see it. You see it even with their antics and their um, com competition with each other, you know. You see it. But there's still that strong sense of community in this book. And it, it it made it enjoyable with all the other stuff that's going on. And, um, you know, even in chaos, even in chaos when the storm hit and the bridge was trying to, you know, bridge was gone and they had to trying to, you know, repair. 
and how they come together, but they also protect each other because, you know, Crazy George want to get out there. <laughs> so. So, who was your uh, favorite character? On my day, yeah. Okay. Um, you, definitely Mama Day, but I, I also really like both of them. I think they, the balance of Mama Day and her sister. Um, yeah, I think they were just, it's, it felt like you, you got two for one. Yeah, and of course, George. Yeah, of course. Oh, you you have to love George. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I would have to. Yeah, it's a, it's a hard. Yeah, if I had to pick one, it's, it's just because Mama Day connects everything. But yeah, George is definitely a, a memorable character in this story. Yeah, she was she was badass. She said what she said. Take it how you want to say it. <laughs> she, and she was strong because she was walking all over the place. <laughs> and it, it it makes graveyard creepy because I never think graveyards are that creepy. Um, yeah, I'm that weird person that, you know, I always feel sad when I pass a graveyard in terms of thinking how many innocent soul had lost their life, you know, that kind of deal. But I never feel like creep out. But in this book, she make you never want to pass a graveyard. <laughs> Yeah, which is how I, I look at. I agree with that one. Um, the the women building the group group the women one building from another to become a whole person. Yeah, this is how I feel about the sisters, Mama Day and her sister. I feel like they're the, the connection are, are together. You know, a chicken coop girl. <laughs> Me, look, I grew up chicken coop. My grandmother had a chicken coop. We used to go up in there and get the eggs in the mornings and stuff. And the way she taught, and I'm like, but I've seen, I've seen chickens attack. I have seen that. I have seen chickens get aggressive, mostly roosters, actually. I've seen them get aggressive and chase people. So they can pet the heck out of you. So when I was reading this, I said, oh, Lord. That's a hell of a, a chicken coop. <laughs> I'm just like, the, to think that is how the man went down. Yeah. Yeah. And I think um, with the graveyard, I think because, you know, in the Caribbean, especially if you're in the country area, um, we still have family members buried on property. Like my uncle back in 2019, we buried him on our, our family property. And um, we used to go, I mean, sit on the grave. And <laughs> so I've never had this fear so much of, a, of graveyards. I always have respect for it and, you know, like I said, feel a certain kind of um, 
um, sadness sometimes when you think of those who died, um, who were innocent and died from something tragic. So, but I've never had this fear, like how she writes it in a book that creeped me out, you know, because I, I mean, if I pass a graveyard and I'm hearing sounds, mm -mm. <laughs> that's going to be a problem. <laughs> Let's see what else? Let's see that. Any more questions, guys? If you had to rate the book, what would you give it? One out of five? Just curious. Oh, why couldn't Mama Day reverse the bad juju will be put on Coco? Hmm. I think because that was years. That I don't think that's something she can she had the power to. She knew that that it was out there. She knew that that but I think I kept thinking maybe she, because Mama Day opened up, she opened up the possibility. She opened up um, when she started doing these other things. She's, she opened up the window for Ruby to, to do her thing. And that's that's how I, I, I took it, um, why the spirit took over Coco. Because she, Mama Day opened up. The window for that to happen. We got some five stars in here. Nice. I'm glad that you guys enjoyed this. Oh, Mama Day implied George had to believe in order for it to be reversed. It was too late when he came around. Um... Uh, it, but it goes back. She opened that. Remember, she sent that letter with that dust in the air and, and lured that man to the town. So, in a way, he had to, he was a part of that. So, um, and then also, they never really opened him to everything. They waited till Coco got terribly bad before they started telling him things. Even if they may not have believed, he may not have believed him at first, but they waited till, the, like, it was where she was dire. She was gonna die. <laughs> that he had to, you know, decided that. Oh, let me tell him this. Let me tell him that. I would have been creeped out too. George had reacted like a normal person. Exactly. Yep. Yeah, well, she's she definitely not God, um, but she do look to that because you saw her singing that 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 um gospel song over and over. Oh, uh, she was she was holding on to hope. She didn't want to lose her her niece. She was holding on to hope. So she was singing that song over and over. And poor George, <laughs> he didn't 
doesn't understand what is going on. He, did, he didn't understand how severe it was. He just was freaked out because of how Coco looked, how her skin looked, and she was, you know, her body. But, he, you know, he didn't realize how bad it was, but she knew how bad it was. That's why she was singing her song. She kept singing. Yeah, I definitely, this is definitely one of my favorite books that I've read this year in in terms of it was so different and I love the genre. For me, um, it was not, not, I would say like a four and a half maybe. I'm not sure if I would, if I say five. I, I, because I have to sit on it and think about it some more. I, a lot of my books recently I haven't read it yet, literally. Um, I haven't read it, uh, my books in the last three months. A lot of the books that I sit on it and think some more of the impact. But I know this book, I think about it a lot um, since I read it. And, you know, it's been uh, at least two weeks. I think about two weeks or so since I finished it. And I remember so much detail about the book still. So I love books that really, when you read it and weeks goes by, you still remember so many information in it. And, and, and you think about it in, in, a, in a way that is uh you know powerful and I, I think she made such a good point in this and i love that although it had mag magical realism it still felt realistic in terms of how it just talks about community and family in that setting in that time period um and i think community setting back in the 80s especially in southern towns was much stronger um you know than now and you see that in this book Oh, so we have a cocoa up in here. <laughs> yes, you made it. <laughs> you read it six years ago. And you were pregnant. Yeah, American folktale, African American folktale. Yeah, I, I love books with folktales that is still realistic and not so overly magical that you you know you miss something. And I I don't think she overdid it with the magical realism in this, um, which I, I I really appreciate that she didn't do that. She still had it mean somewhat realistic, but drop that folktale in there that makes it special. Yeah, I'm going to read these other two because I definitely want to have, I mean, the Women of Bruce's Place, the movie made you stop and think several, there's several things happen in that movie that makes you stop and think. Um, and, and when it came out during that, the era when it came out, there was so many things that was discussed in, in that movie that um, was still not widely accepted. And I like that they touch on it and talked about it in a way that, was powerful back then. I think now it might not grab people as much because we're exposed to a lot more things. But back then, that was a lot of taboo things that was talked about in this that was really good. The reset, yeah. I think she did some research, yeah. And who knows? Um, she might have lived down the south a little bit and knew somebody. Like I said, the Caribbean thing might, might not have been that hard for her to use. It's, it's you know, too bad she's not around anymore that we can't, you know, it, like, ask questions. But she passed away, so that's, you know, fortunate. Oh, um... Yeah, earlier I talked about my favorite. My favorite was um, the sisters because I felt like you got two for one. 
the mama day her sister. You got two for one, but I also love George. So it's you know, it's 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 a hard one to pick just one. Yeah, the women of Bruce's play, they did an amazing job with the casting and the actress. And they they played the heck out of that movie. So um she I'm glad they were able to to at least have a really good movie. I don't know if they have any other movie. I think the Bailey's Cafe might have a movie. I'm not sure. Let me know. But as the, the only movie I know that she's had was The Woman of Bruce's Place. Yes. Yes. Shout out to the Blacklist books. Yes. The Blacklist. Yes. I I I really wanted to do that um because a lot of new books get so much shine these days because you know you have Instagram and all that. Back in the days these books didn't get that shine because we didn't have social media. So I love when I'm able to dig and find books from uh a few years back, which is why you guys know this. I read a lot of old books. I do. I do. Um, and it's not a lot of us out there that read a lot of old books. I think the new releases get so much more attention that, you know, these books sometimes get lost in the shuffle. They, you know, people don't talk about them. Bless George, yeah. George was definitely amazing. He was amazing in this. He played his part. He got lured in it. <laughs> but <laughs> he played his part. And I love that how she writes it where we can we can know what he's thinking after the afterlife kind of deal, a bits and pieces of that, because how he talked about his death. Yeah, and like I said earlier too, you just can appreciate an author that can give you a positive male character for that time period because they did not do that a lot. There's so many books from that era that men are not depicted in a positive light. And I think a lot of it goes for what was happening. The 70s, 70s and the 80s, there was a lot of absent black men in the family. So I think they just didn't focus on that versus... You know, now you, you find that people gravitate to make sure they write books with that. But back then they were missing. So it was easy to write the negative. So I love that she was able to um, write a positive male character, black male character. Willow Springs, South Carolina is real. But this was wasn't it supposed to be outside of Georgia though? Well, no, South Carolina is outside of Georgia somewhat. Hmm. I should know. I went to college in Georgia, near Savannah. Backless book on my radar. Um. I have this situation here that I need to get through and I got tons of books sent to me, but I don't have that many. Um, Alice Walker, I still have some more of her books I want to read. Um, definitely going to be picking up more of her books. Um, there's a, there's a few authors that I can't think of right now that I've seen their name floating around for many years and never really, um, but drop some names, drop some names of some, um, <laughs> yes, my TBR is, is guys, if you watch my previous video where I talked about those books that were sent to me, since that video, I have, 16 more books that were sent to me. Yeah. 
I did I didn't realize when I signed up for reviewing some debut authors that it was gonna be so many. I mean, there's a lot, a lot. Um, so my TBR right now is not even not what I expected for the end of the year at all. But there are a lot of short books. So I'm gonna try and get those out. But there are two big books in the pile. Um, yeah. And and the thing is, I I am one of those reviewers that did not sign up for a lot of um publishers um mailing lists. I'm on, I think, two. And normally they do send me a list and say, Are you interested in any of these? And I will say yes or no. And there's one that I do get dropped off sometimes didn't expect it like i got a boot sent to me this week but it was a nice setup they give you a little opening i i opened it but i didn't show it yet on um instagram or anything um but for the most part i don't and i'm wondering for those people who have a large following i mean i'm still on the 3k so those people that have like large following i can't imagine what their mailbox look like and how you control all those books that you get that you might not have asked for it, but you you were on the way on a, we call it their list. So they just send it to you. And um, I don't want to ever be that crazy because this was crazy. I mean, we're talking, I have close to 30 books that I've received in the last two weeks. That's crazy. <laughs> but that I agreed to, but I didn't realize it was going to be that many books. I thought it was going to be give and take. 15 books, not twice that much. And there's a possibility I might get some more. So I don't know. Oh, I did not finish. Let me see what you got. I've read a lot of Terry McMillan. I, I, I've read Bernie's. I have um, Bernie's uh, McFadden. I have probably four more books that I haven't read from her yet. I'd like to slow read hers because I, she's another one I don't want to finish all her books yet. <laughs> so I just, you know, read her books maybe once a year. I read one of her books. Um, mm -mm. Tony K. I don't know the author. Let me see. What do you, what books she has? Um, Sharon. What's a, what's a book from her that you think I should read? Let me get my pen because I don't know that author at all. Yeah, the, the, the thing about this, and this is where now I'm I'm at a stand because two of the books that were sent to me, I already own and was already on my TBR for next month. Um, so it would be nice to give them away, but these books are huge and it's just not gonna it's, it's for me, it's just not worth it me trying to send that to anybody. Um, so that's the disappointment in some of these because I'm like, well, I have two of these or I have Maybe three of books that I already have. No, it's three. They send me three books that I they send me the so Sicily types of books again, which I already have. They send uh sweetness of water. Uh they send a love letter WB the boar, which I have already. And, but it's just so difficult with these shipping now, how the shipping situation is happening now. And, you know, to, to mail some, that's why a lot of time when I do giveaways, I just do it where I just order it directly from Amazon or whoever I ordered from and have them directly send it to the individual. So I can cut out all that extra expense. But for me the like having to ship it, it's just, it's way more difficult. Yeah, Donovan, loving Donovan. Oh, you guys need to read that. That is um, uh, Bernice 
um, my friend Mac Fadden book. Um, that is a, a really good book to read. I'm glad you read it. So, um, um, Bernie's Mac Fadden is just. I've yet to be disappointed by any of her books. That is an author that I always encourage if you are looking for an author that you 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 just want to try out because you're not going to be dis, um, disappointed. I've yet, the most disappointed I've ever had was one book, I think the butterfly one, where you wanted more. And that's not a disappointment. That's just a, a author who wrote a shorter book and you just felt like you could have used 50 more pages because you wanted to know more, um, which is a good thing to have. But for the most part, she's an amazing author. So I definitely say, check her out. Oh, okay. All right, I'm writing it down. The Salt Eater. Hmm. What genre is any of these books? Um, Alicia. Um, what what um genre is these um is her books? Thank you, Nancy. It's okay. I will look it up. Oh, it is on my blog. So a journal mood calendar, it's on the blog. You could just go into the blog and, you know, copy it and you can get it that way. Um, it's my name. ComfyCozyUp.com Because um, um, like I said in the video I know quite a few people um, Don't Have Instagram but want to do journal mode So it is on the blog Go go to the blog right now It's the first article And the, the calendar is in there Do I experience anxiety When books pile up Seems like a lot of booktuber experience that I would never <laughs> I would never. I have made up my mind and accepted that I would never read all the books I've ever wanted to read in my lifetime. So I just do my best and keep it pushing <laughs> because um, books is a joy for me. So I just decided like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. And I'm an organized person. So I just look at books where I know this is just not for me and either don't read it or put it on my shelf over here until um, the mood hits me. Oh, the magical realism too. So let's hope. Um, I'm a, I'm gonna do. Uh, I'm gonna read her, <laughs> but we'll see. Yeah, and I would check. I would check out. Um, the, yeah, definitely would do the same. Check out Didi. Um, interview. I just didn't read her book. That book that she. I think they were talking about. That's why I haven't watched it. Cause I kind of like watching it and then read the books just in case there's spoilers. Ooh, Harlem. You know I love um authors and artists from the um from um Harlem, Harlem. Oh, they live. Oh, it's okay. Um, literary fiction, short story, historical fiction. Okay, then she's definitely going to be a cup of my cup of tea. Then, oh, 
Oh, Sharon. Yes, I would. De- now that I know what to do, because you guys see the first few minutes of this, I was all kind of confused. <laughs> so now that I have an idea of how this work, I would definitely try to do some more, especially maybe in December um, when I have more time, I would do more of um, of these. Um, and, you know, just again, I love doing polls. I love doing um have you guys engage in this because I want to talk. I don't want to set things up on and now, you know, not have anyone to talk to. So the poll worked out pretty good for this. And, um, and we're just going to pick other books. I definitely doing backlist. I am going to stick to the backlist situation and do that and have people read those books. And I think the size of this book was perfect. It wasn't too big. And I think it, it allows people to, to read and and not feel overwhelmed with big books because this book was about 312 pages and I think that's a good size I'm trying I would try to keep the books under 400 pages because I think it makes it more um easy for people to get in especially if you're not a a big time fast reader because I know a lot of people are not fast reader and they take a long time to to read and uh, so um the book size was actually pretty good and again you guys, this was a good one. I'm glad um, you guys enjoyed this one. And yeah, I will definitely do more of this. I'll probably do more of, we can just talk about other books and just in general chit chat. I love this. I've never done a live. This is the bucket list. Remember when I did my, <laughs> my goal for the year, I said I need to do a live. I've never done a live on this channel and this is my first live. So it's, it's pretty good. I'm, I'm I'm really glad I did this. And I love the intimacy of this discussion that we're having. It's really nice. Oh, you did. Thanks. I see more people are in here. No, I have not read any Daniel Black. Nope. But I'm going to write it down. <laughs> Keep it coming. <laughs> um, And if you, you're going to give me an author, if you've read something from that author, give me your favorite book. This way I could, I could get a starting point, you know. To, to go off. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And a thanks for those you if you you know you came in late. I have no problem with that. I know this was a a, a weird time, but it's Friday night. Yeah. Now, do you guys like Friday like a Friday night late night or a Saturday night late night like would you like to do this like in the middle of the day? Um I'm just curious because I know some people do their lives in the middle of the day, but I just just wondering if you like the a Friday night or a Saturday night kind of deal for future for the future. Okay. Okay. So I'll do the same thing again. Whenever I do another live, I'll put the poll up and I put the time in, and you guys just you know the majority rules. It was a it was not even a competition because it was like a seventy something percent at seven p.m. So you know, but it's the same thing. Brooklyn girl. You know what author I haven't read yet? And is it Anne Patchy? Am I saying right? I, I've not read anything from her. She, I think she's another author that I just haven't read anything from her.
Let me see if I can, if I'm getting her, her name right. No, I'm, I think I said her name wrong, but I still can't find the book. I don't know the book. Street something. Yeah, I'll just have to, whenever I see it on somebody, I, I have it written down somewhere. It's in, probably in another, my older older journal I have. Not that one. So I definitely have the wrong name. No, I read her book. Bye, Coco. No, I think I'm, I'm definitely got the name wrong. No, I read her book. And I did a rant. <laughs> Not that, Anne. I think I got the wrong name. Oh my God, why am I thinking I'm so off with a name? It's street something, S street something. I can't think of a name. Oh, is it? Maybe it's Paul. Good night. Maybe if I put classic book, she might show up. Modern classic. Black modern. Dern. I think she's considered a modern classic. There you go, the streets. I knew, I knew you were going to get it. <laughs> there you go. Yes, have you read the streets? Have you guys read it, the street? Yeah, I'm definitely, um, let me write that down so I don't forget, because I was all calling her all kind of names. Pat is, is Peter. And it's 
Yeah, it's from 1946. Oh, yeah. That's why it's in a modern classic. Yeah, I've always wanted to read this, and I just have not got to this book. This So this is another one that I need to read. Oh, you, so Pat was really good? Yeah, okay. I figured, it's just the whole description of it. You, you know, Harlem, World War II era. Yeah, those books t tend to get me every time. Yeah, I wouldn't read it now. Um... I have so many. I wouldn't read none. That's definitely a next year situation. Um, you know, when you think of it, guys, we only have two more months left in the year. Wow. Yeah. It's this year has really um like gone. Uh, so my, my mom just texted me to ask me if I know Sister Soldier. So she got me nervous. I was like, why are you texting? You know, like, did something happen? So nothing happened, guys. She just probably saw her book. Really? But she's also, I noticed a lot of the authors from that era, we're talking from the Hall of Renaissance era down to like the 50s, a lot of them didn't get a lot of support. And I think in the book industry, they they they, they weren't, weren't appreciated till now. I mean, look at Nella Lawson. There's people that didn't know she exists. And she's been getting a lot of shine now where people want to turn her book and movies and all that. But back then, there was no, a lot of these authors didn't make any money. Yeah. Thanks for dropping in. I know the UK time. Yeah, I, I, I know because I know a lot of my um, subscribers are from the UK. So I know the time was going to be terrible for some. Um, but, you know, it, it happens. That's That five and six hour difference sucks. But I'm glad you drop in. The uh, the 12 Tribes of Hattie. I have that book, you know. It's, in my, it's on my shelf somewhere. Oh, God. Where is it? I know it's on the shelf somewhere. I have that book. Um. I need to read that book. Yeah, um, because I last thing you guys know, I was heavy into the Harlem Renaissance books. And then this year, I didn't read as much, but um, you learn so much about the backstories in these Harlem Renaissance books because they have these forwards in the front. So you, you get to see the ugly side and how so much of them didn't make any money um, while they were alive. Um, some of them books didn't even get published until recently for the last 10 years um the book the book pretty much were in small well some of them technically did get published because they were like small publishing houses that took them up so they were only around for maybe uh a small amount that got published to a very small community of writers um readers and writers and then you never see it again and then recently they will open it back up and publish these books so there's a lot of great books out there. Some of them just 
in, in people, addicts and family just don't know what to do with it because it's been so many years and decades and these people are dead. But we, we I had some really sad moments when you think of some of these Harlem, Harlem Renaissance writers, um, you know, dying with nothing, you know. Look at Zora Neale Hurst. She didn't even have a tombstone. So I should tell you, it, it happens. Um, we I think we we're just starting. Her support because she came from well, it has to be more to that because um, there's a lot of the Harlem Renaissance weren't poor. If you if they really weren't They're, the standard of poor, they weren't. Um, they were highly educated. They were. Um, they came from a, a two house family most of the time. Um, so if you really think about it in, in that sense, you know, it can't be just the wealth. It, it has to be more to it than that. But I would say that um, a lot of time publishing did not pay them attention. They did not um, get the respect from the publishing. You, you think about Claude McCain. I think he's, he was really screwed um, and people took advantage of him. And a lot of his books, weren't released till recently and people just knowing that there's people that didn't even know he had novels because he was just known for his poetry. Um, but you have the other ones like, um, that just gave up after one book. Um, you have the, you have a lot of Harlem Renaissance authors that were biracial. So that also complicated things as well, because they were considered given, um, more opportunity than if they were, you know, completely, you know, 100% black versus um, the biracial, Nella Lawson biracial. You have, uh, uh, oh, I can't even, can't even think. Uh, Fawcett, she biracial. I mean, quite a lot of them are passing in real life, passing for that period. Uh, told me. Gene told me that like he's another one that he started off the, Ren the Hall of Renaissance, but some people really do not want to consider him because if you saw a picture of this man, you would think he was a white man. He looks very much a white man, but he is biracial. It's it's interesting um, when you think of um, a lot of those Hall of Renaissance people that um, in the line, they were biracial. Um, and it, it, it also goes back to the university system where a lot of the universities were that were black were full of biracial kids, you know. So for the most part, a lot of them come for money. Yeah. Yeah, I can I definitely can see that. I can see that. Yeah, it's such a fascinating thing when I when I really dig into the Harlem Renaissance um, era because I learned so much history of the publishing house in this country from reading those books because um, they the people who did pick these books up to republish them to reprint them you know add stories add information and you were able to learn things that um, you probably wouldn't have known so. It's, that's why I always encourage people to read from the Harlem Renaissance books because you learn. And they were very much, um, most of their books, I, I, you know, sad to say, is a reflection of that time as well. So, you know, that's the time of, you know, people leaving the South to go to New York, trying to hit it big and don't have nothing. And the circumstance that they have to live and how they survive or those that come from you have in uh, this confusion. And these are people who somewhat from a middle-class working family, they weren't poor, but they wanted the lifestyle of becoming professional doctors or on Broadway. And there was no opportunity um, if you were not um, white. So they had to deal with that. So these stories really reflect on the time period. So when you read it, you do get a lot of historical content. I've not read all of Zora books. I've only read one Zora books. 
which is their eyes were watching God. That is it. <laughs> and it's that's pretty sad because I know I need to read more uh, because I really love that book. Uh, Walter Francis White. I have I haven't read this book, but I've read others from him. It's on the it's on my um my Hall of Renaissance shelf. I think I have the the fire in the flint from that author. A lot of Harlem Renaissance books are not known. It's it's probably five that's known. <laughs> Majority of them are not known till recently. We're we're really seeing these books show up more now because publishers decided to republish them. So that was one of the reasons why you didn't see a lot of Harlem Renaissance books being talked about. They were not in print. It, yeah not in print at all. There was one that was out of print for about 30 something years that I read last, no, this year. Yeah, this year, um, which was the one that I really loved, which was uh, Tropic Death. I love that book, that, that, love that book. Um, that was not in pub, um, print for quite a few years. And um, there's another one can't think of that's not was in print for a couple of years so that's why you haven't really heard of a lot of these Harlem Renaissance books not because you know people didn't want to talk about it they just weren't there to talk about because they weren't in print so I, I definitely want to read some more so let me know if, if you guys are into reading some Harlem Renaissance books. Because they're short. They, they, that's one of the plus about the Harlem Renaissance books. They're short. Under 300 pages. Sometimes, most of them are usually two, under 200 pages. But they pack a punch. They knew how to tell a story in a few pages. Oh, black no more, girl, girl. <laughs> yes, all oh, that book, all oh, that book. That was such a good book, and it's that's another short one. Short, short, short. Do I even have it over here? Yep. Yeah, this. <laughs> you see how short this book is, guys. Just look how short this book is. Look how short this book is. Read, read this. Read this. Yeah, that book surprised the heck out of me. I wasn't ready for that. I wasn't ready for that. Yes. Good night. Thanks for stopping by. So we, we're going to talk for another 13 minutes. We're just going to end it at 9. So that would be a good stop. But um, so you guys can still chit chat with me. And then we just, we did good on this. We can still talk about some more books. Yes, that's another reason why I have been pushing for the Hall of Renaissance and why I decided once I... Picked up my first, and then I also was um, um, learning the background story of some of the authors and the time period of publishing. I started reading them, and I started shining. And I love now that I do see them more on people's Instagram and people talking about them because these authors didn't get the shine that they deserved, and they need to get it. Um, they need to be um, their book needs to be a, a, a common thing. Um, I do like that Nella Larson is getting some shine. She's getting a whole lot of shine because um, Passing and um, my favorite, Quicksand, is, is a good book. And what I would say is the writing style of the Harlem Renaissance is a little bit different because they often have open ending. 
Um, that's the writing style for that era for whatever reason. But it's done in a way that the intention of it to make you think. So if you read Passing, you saw how the ending was. If you read um, Black of the Berry, yeah, you saw how the ending was. So it 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 has that little bit of open ending that it it's it's it was a writing style of that era that I think a lot of uh, modern art authors do take from. So when the modern authors do it, people are like upset and are mad and like, oh, I don't like that ending, that kind of deal. But the Hollerans I knew how to do it. That that was their thing, and they did a really good job of how they end books. Yeah, we can definitely do a buddy read. We can definitely do one. We can probably do one in either January or February or, you know, beginning of next year, sometime next year, because um, I, I, I am bombarded with a lot of books that were sent to me recently. But I still have quite a few on my shelf that I can do more tour of, and we can just, you know, go for it, and we just select one of the books and we buddy read it. I love to be able to talk, and that's the one thing I haven't been able to do is to really talk about the Harlem Renaissance book with someone, um, because I think the discussion will be so sweet. Because, like I said, their writing style was very unique in terms of how they end books back then. Yeah, well, we could do another live discussion. Um, Mad world. Yeah, we definitely can do that. Um, so yeah, maybe I can just do a Harlem Renaissance the next time and, and we just pick one, um, go to the shelf and then I'll just have some and then we can just, you know, pick one, maybe do another poll and we can go through that. Um, like I said, they're short, so it's not something you're going to need a long time to read. Um, their book tend to be, like I said, 300 pages and less or under 200 pages. So yeah. But, you know, for now, if you guys have not read this one, this one is 120 pages. This is 120 pages, but it flies by because there's so much going on. But this is a, a satire. Yeah, very sarcastic, but make you think deal kind of book. So, yeah, I definitely think, you, you know, if you guys haven't read this, Put it on your TBR. You, you you can read this in one in a in a sitting. Um, yeah, and then um, how you guys do? You guys read classics? Yes, black no more. Let me put it. Get it close up. You can see the author and you got it. So yeah, it is, it is interesting. It's interesting. Do you see the author name, George? Uh -oh. Yeah, um, I would say, yeah, the Victorian classic definitely get a lot of shine, um, but not so, yeah, the Harlem Renaissance, no, but the, the Victorian, but there are some Victorian classics that I've never heard of that, you know, I definitely want to get in at some point. I am, I am a Dickens now. I, I am Dickens all the way. <laughs> Dickens all the way. I am literally this much left. Not even this much, to be honest with you. It's like maybe this much because the rest of his notes left in this. And this book, oh my goodness. This is Bleak House. Oh, worth all of the reads. Worth it. I was so much... I mean, I've heard so many good things about it, but I didn't realize it was going to be such an epic read. And Dickens... 
Dickon is that author that we just have to accept that he's a, he was not a good guy. Um, the way he did his, his, his wife, <laughs> the way he sometimes describes author, he got away with it because of the time period. Um, but how he's able to tell a story, how he's able to... Um, to be original because he is when you think of original author he is in that bracket no if and buts about it um you know and many authors that you don't realize that people say they don't read classics got inspiration from him when you start reading a lot of dickens you see the inspiration in modern literature you see it no if and buts um but he, but once you get past the fact that yes, I don't care about his person, him personally because, yeah, he, Dick, Dickens can be a jerk. <laughs> That's the best way I can put it. There are books that I holler and laugh at at things he said, and I'm like, y'all, these modern authors would never get away with that at all. <laughs> but. He is a masterpiece when it comes to storytelling. And if you're a person that loves literature, you should at least read one of his books. I would, this, I love this. This is definitely yes, but I would say go for Nicholas Nickleby. Nicholas Nickleby is probably the fastest classic I've ever got through from Dickens. And it was amazing. It was amazing. This one, the writing in this is a lot more poetic. It's, he's, he's, he was in, his, in, his, in a zone when he was writing this. Um, you know, even when he's talking about death and it's just how it's written, it's just like, yeah, he, he literally was mastering his writing craft when he did this one. Um, the first Dickin book I read was, uh, A Tale of Two City. And I wanted to throw that book. I wanted to go dig the man up. I could not. That ending took me out. <laughs> I was mad. Um, what I would say about Dickens, if I read, if I read Dickens in high school, I would have hated the experience. I was not in that level of reading to enjoy and appreciate Dickens at all. If you gave this book to me 15 years ago, I probably still wouldn't have appreciated and been able to get into the storyline and get the humor and get the 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 suspense and the, the the writing style i wouldn't appreciate it then i think dickens is a is it's a author that is not for everyone and also certain point um certain time in your life where your reading experience is going to be different i appreciate him now but i'm gonna tell you right now anytime you if people tell me they read this in high school i was like hell yeah i wouldn't like it i would have been like you too i would have not been a part of this Dickens situation in high school at all. So it, it, it comes with years of experience and, and taste. My taste changed over the years and I started liking classic and enjoy it and laugh. I have buddy read a few with Didi and we've laughed because Dickens is a comedian too. I think there's a there's a few other classic people that I've enjoyed. And I don't think I would have enjoyed in high school. I don't think any classic would have got me in high school. <laughs> now that I think about it, none. <laughs> no, no Victor Hugo. Nope, nope, nope. There's a uh, there's a few that I have on my list that I want to read, but I, I think I'm just so obsessed with Dickens right now. But there's a few other classic that I want to get into especially the women um, that I want to get in more into. I love Elizabeth Gaskell and I've read two, either two or three of her books. I think I, I enjoy that. I am a huge um, Jane Austen fan. I've had, I have all her books that I read, um, you know, but I think when it cut the, the count of, um, um, I can't even remember the name of the book now. <laughs> The Count of Monte Cristo. I love that book. That's a classic I always recommend to everybody. You should read that book. It's a chunker. It's 100 and it's 1200 pages. So it's, it's big. 
but it is it is a masterpiece. There's five star, no if and but. I don't know anybody that did not like that book. And you know, it's a classic that I think a lot of people, but those are kind of classic that are not based on romance so much. It's more of the trickery, money, lying, survival. So because of the action packed stuff that you get in there, it, it makes it easier to read. Yes, um, this is so true. Yeah, oh, yeah, my mom, yeah, my mom's funny, yeah. Um, yeah, I think because I, I don't know the difference in the translation that it wouldn't, I wouldn't know the difference in, in, in how, if it's, you know, French and, and how they would have, you know, cut it out. I've been lucky with the Penguin, Penguin Classic. I hadn't had any issue with the translation. I think the trans, not the translation, but the um, editing, because, you know, some of these books get edited 50 million times. But the translation to me has worked well for me. It makes sense. I don't see it where I'm like confused of this, you know, the sentence structure and all that. So I stick with the Ping and Random House. I know there's several different um, editions for the classic, but the Penguin seems to work for me right now. Um, Pat, I think it's the reason why I would say that, you know, when it, um, Americans are loving the English authors right now, um, we love anything that's not us. That, that's the problem. You know, I think you guys want maybe what we're publishing and we want what y'all publishing. <laughs> so it's just, it's weird, but it goes and it comes and goes because it's just a trend right now that people, especially like African writers, African writers are doing very well right now. There's a lot of desire to read African writers, um, which is a good thing because, you know, some of them took years. I mean, they don't have a long history of publishing. Um, so it comes and it goes and you never know what's going to be tomorrow because right now um, people are seeking out more Black authors. We don't know how long that's going to last, but we're going to enjoy it while we can, that kind of deal. So, um, Madwell, are you in, where are you located? So you love it in French. Are you in France? Yeah, Nigerian authors are definitely getting a lot of shine. I, I am definitely seeing a lot of that. That's for sure. And I'm here for it. Give them their shine. Oh, you in Canada, Ontario? You're French, okay? Yeah, um, yeah, um, and I'm for it. I'm for it. Um, as long as the stories don't become pigeon, you know, where it's 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 they stick into one kind of genre, or one kind of area, and not giving everybody um, different authors from Nigeria. To write stories because you don't want because it becomes so much a trend that sometimes there you, you start seeing the same storylines over and over um pat yeah um they do that here too um i think you don't get to see a lot of people reading classic for leisure like me it's it's there's, this is not an academic situation. So I think um, what ends up happening is people, um, the, the school-wise, they read it, but a lot of them don't even remember what they read or care. Um, but I think as like me reading it for, for fun and for enjoyment and for to learn and experience it, 
as an adult, you don't get a lot of that. Like you, usually if somebody's seen with a book like that, they'll probably ask if I'm reading it for school. <laughs> They're like, are you reading it for school? And it's not. Well, you know, I love me some Chimamanda, but she doesn't have anything new. And I know she's a little bit on the controversial side now. <laughs> but I don't know a lot of ones that I would say, like, you know, I, I've read quite a few, but I don't have, like, where I'm like, oh, yeah, go read this author, that author. So, But I know I have some that I've read this year, so maybe you could check my channel and see some of them out. I think in this January, no, Black History Month, I've read one or maybe two in Black History Month. Gail Jones. No, I have not read. No. Yeah, uh, Madwell, I got about 30 <laughs> new authors looking at me right now <laughs> that I just recently got. I'm not adding any more new authors to my list yet until I can get through these books that recently got sent to me. All right, let me write this one down because I don't know her. Oh, I'm 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 writing it down too. <laughs> she asked that question. I want to know too. <laughs> so, thank you for the wreck. <laughs> but yeah, but um, that book, the um, the butter honey pick, I would definitely, I would definitely um, put it on my list for next year. Um, can't do it for the end of the year. Yeah, I have uh, probably about out of the 30 books that was sent to me, I believe 10 of them were um, nonfiction. Guys, y'all hear that rain? <laughs> it's pouring outside. The Girl with a Loud of Voice. I don't know why I have not picked that book up. I see it all the time and I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. It's not drawing me for whatever reason. Don't talk about the snow. No, no, no. I'm in a snow area. I don't even want to think about it. Like right now it's pouring rain. And all I'm thinking, thank God it's not cold. It's like probably 50 degrees. Um, because if it wasn't, it, it'd probably be snow. It, yeah. I'm, I don't even want to think about it. I hate winter. It's 52 degrees, thank God. Because my goodness. Yeah. I'm sure in a month, a month from now, if it was pouring like that, it would be snow. And you know, I live alone. Y'all remember my vlog earlier this year when I'm trying to shovel myself out? We had like almost 30 inch. It was like 28, I think, inch of snow. You couldn't even see my car. Yeah, I remember that video. I don't I'm not looking forward to winter. So we are a little bit over the eight, nine oh eight. So we're gonna end this here. Um, hopefully I can save this with no problem. It's my first time, guys. So let's hope I can save this because I know some people would love to watch this. But yeah, but we're gonna end this, and I'm so so glad you guys came out. This was a, a great experience, and um, I'll definitely do it again. 
since it, it worked out and thanks for sticking with me because you know for the first few minutes when a little technical difficulty here but i am um, now that i know what i'm doing and if i do it more often i'll get used to it right so thanks for you know joining me thanks for reading this book with me i love it as well and i i i, it's, I thought it was a beautifully written and the storyline and everything about it was really good so thank you so much and i will see you in another one there's gonna be a lot more videos this week because i have to do my my what i feel about the booker the, the six i've finished the six books and also my do my my wrap up for the month and nine rama starts next week so watch my videos and support me and all that good stuff i love you guys and this was fun this was so much fun thank you guys Bye.